everyone. Um, as Mahendra said, I'm Amelie. I'm the Research Development Manager here at the British Library. Um, the bread and butter of my day job is to encourage researchers to collaborate with the British Library to do new and interesting things with our collections, including our digital collections. So it therefore gives me really great pleasure to be part of these awards. This year, we had a total of nine entries in the category for research, and I'm just going to go through... Uh, a very small number of these very quickly now I realise I'm be before the coffee slot I think so so I'm not going to say too much about Timescape because you heard about that um, in the learning award um, which Ria talked about it's an augmented reality app for iOS and Android that overlays archival photographs and documentary information about historic buildings in Kolkata and that came from the University of Liverpool the second project that we'd like to highlight um, is the large-scale comparison of world music corpora with computational to, uh, tools. This came from Queen Mary University of London. This project used music recordings from two archives, the Smithsonian Folkways recordings and our own British Library Sound Archive, to explore similarities and differences between music from different areas of the world. The third entry that we'd like to highlight is something called Sampler, which stands for Searching and Mining Tools for Languages Archives. This project developed a domain-independent and language-independent software infrastructure to help researchers to unleash the full potential of large-scale digital text archives, such as the British Library's Microsoft Corpus of Scanned Books. And last but by no means least was a project which used remote, remote search automation, automation to construct a suicide corpus from 19th century digitised British Library newspapers using R. And then this was then um, enabled mental illness in the 19th century, um, in 19th century literature to be explored. So congratulations to all nine entrants, not just the ones that I've focused here, uh, focused on here. Um, so moving first of all to our honourable mention, this project was, we felt was particularly strong because it embraced the technical infrastructure that we need to develop to um, make our digital collections more accessible to researchers. And so the, the award goes to the Suicide Corpus from 19th century newspapers. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for this award, uh, or mention uh, uh, what I think. Uh, it all started about 18 months ago at the British Library Road, so in Wolverhampton. Um, what I was interested was about uh, what was the depiction of mental illness or part of mental illness in the 19th century. And the task was very challenging. Uh, we had to do a lot of work, like uh, assessing the data of whole archives from place where I live, that is Wolverhampton and uh, how to access uh, Citrix frames, Citrix receiver, all those things. What I really liked in my practice is about using R, and the whole work has been based on the R. More or less everything is open source, including the operating system which I've, which I've used. The, the task was very challenging, and coming from medical background, uh, I didn't, I like to do the whole, analyze the whole data for the 100 years. And that was about 1,500 million pages if I include both archives, GIS2 and GIS1, which uh, I've been able to do and probably automate to some extent. And uh, there were issues about using machine learning or even searching the data or even what part of the text to be included. That it, it's quite a big task, but I think I have been able to achieve my objective to a large extent. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And now moving on swiftly to our runner-up. Um, so in the runner-up category, we particularly like, we're impressed by the potential um, for the, the development of software infrastructure that could be applied broadly across archives around the world and the fact that it was language independent. So without further ado, the runner-up uh, is Sampler, Search and Mining Tools for Language Archives. Thank 
So firstly, I'd like to thank the British, uh, British Library because they've always been very open in discussing ideas and sharing their data sets, uh, as well as taking time out to come and meet us uh, with various presentations. Uh, myself and my colleagues, uh, Professor Mark uh, Levine and Del Zhang and Professor Dan Levine, uh, would like to express our gratitude and thanks, and uh, we're very honoured for, uh, for the award. Um, Sampler started as a system really to address the lack of uh, digital tools for uh, small-scale archives. Um, we started off with an archive of Aramaic magic bowls from late antiquity. And um, since then, we've uh, applied it to various domains and, and various uh, archives that we've been fortunate enough, such as the uh, Financial Times. Um, if Dr. Luke McKernan's here, I'd like to say a big thank you for sharing that with us. And um, we would also like to thank uh, for the opportunity to test uh, our system, both in terms of languages that they can operate with. Um, since then, we, we've moved over to the domain of medicine um, as an experiment with the UK Medical Heritage Archive, uh, which we'd like to continue our work with. And um, as part of future plans, we would like to address the issue of uh, semantic search and mining and uh, annotation of archival data, which we feel is uh, something that's quite lacking in current search technologies. And uh, we're always keen to collaborate with researchers in the humanities or in any sector, really, um, in the sense of developing tools which are actually going to be used for research rather than just kind of cool stuff, you know, which, uh, which we tend to do as computer scientists uh, without really thinking about the need. And um, so if anybody is interested, if they have small-scale archives, large-scale archives, uh, and want to work together, then uh, do get in contact. Thank you very much again for the award and your time. Thank you. Thank you, and now to uh, announce the winner, which is a large-scale comparison of world music corpora with computational tools from Queen Mary. So congratulations to them. I think they're on their way to the stage. Thank you. Uh, so we're from the Center for Digital Music at Queen Mary University of London, and we wanted to look at a folk and traditional music from around the world and compare it with computational tools to explore music similarity relationships. And to be a bit more specific, we know that music travels beyond country borders and countries share their um, music characteristics, but could it be that um, some countries or some areas that have been in geographical isolation, they haven't exchanged so much music information. So can we find some music examples that are really different from everything else in our world music? Right. Um, the first challenge in this is to create a world music corpus. There is no archive containing all the music of the world. We started looking at world and traditional music, um, a subset of it from the British Library that was curated for the purposes of the Digital Music Lab project, which was a former collaboration uh, with British Library and City and Queen Mary University of London. But this subset was not enough to cover all the areas we wanted to look at. So we combined this with um, a subset of the Smithsonian Folkways recordings to create a good spread. And we also balanced it, ending up with 8,000 recordings, which is still not so Big, but uh, it's the largest that has been studied for research. Another challenge was to process uh, the metadata. There is rich information for each recording, but it's not always consistent or is not ready to use with a computer. For example, Yugoslavia former no longer represents a single country, or my favorite example for location is singer's home, which is really specific, but the computer will struggle to identify the exact location. We have language information, but it comes with different spellings. Uh, it comes with uh, different dialects, which make it difficult to find the language exactly. And then recording dates come with different formats. So it's more challenging to extract the year, for example, from these different formats. So another contribution is the curated metadata. So how did we answer uh, our question? Uh, so we, were, we work with sound recordings, and we used signal processing tools to extract features from the audio signal that capture aspects of rhythm, melody, timbre, and harmony. And we used machine learning techniques to learn higher level representations that make it easier to track music similarity relations. And then to answer our question on what is really different, we used outlier detection techniques, just as a way to quantify what stands out from the collection. What we found, 
Comparing music from 137 countries, we found that Botswana is a country that has a lot of outlier recordings. If we focus on only rhythm features, uh, we found some African countries such as Botswana and Benin that have um, a lot of rhythmic outliers and there is a frequent use of polyrhythms in those recordings. And if we focus on harmony, we found Southeast Asian countries such as Pakistan and Indonesia that have inharmonic instruments such as gong and bells. There is an interactive demo online, I will not go through it now, where you can zoom in every country and uh, listen to recordings that have been detected for being very different from the rest of the corpus. And there's a lot to be explored yet. Um, the corpus can be expanded, the computational models can be improved, and there are a lot of questions to be answered, so we would love to see more corpus studies in world music like this. And finally, a big thank you to all the people who work behind the scenes for putting together these collections. It's a beautiful collection. It made it very easy for us to use. And big thanks to British Library Labs, and especially Mahendra. Thank you. Um, we're, we're actually running a little bit late, so I'm going to sort of just wrap up there. I just want to thank all the award entrants. Um, the reason why we do the awards is to show examples of use of our collections. So when we go out, we do a lot of outreach. We go to lots of universities, not just universities, other organizations as well. We can then show them examples of things people have done and hopefully inspire them and really inspire you. So maybe you're going to be standing up here next year um, with, an in, with an entry in one of the categories.